This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. If you click on the link in the description below, it'll take you to their store and they'll know I sent you there. Hello everyone, I'm Nita Hone, and this is the first time in a long time that I'm bringing you a History of the Band and Restricted List video. For a while there, life got a little too crazy to keep up with my draft videos, my top 10s, and the History of the Band and Restricted List videos, but I think I will have time this summer to finish the series up and get us up to the modern day. The last three episodes before we went on hiatus were all about the year 2011, the year the modern format was created, and a year with tons of bannings and restrictions, so there was a lot to cover. This episode is kind of the opposite of that. 2012 to 2014 were pretty quiet years as far as the banned and restricted list went, with only six cards being banned or restricted during that time. That is the fewest bannings or restrictions Wizards has ever had in a three-year period. As a result, I've chosen to cover all three of those years in this single video. First, let's talk about 2012, a year where only two cards were banned and both of them were banned in Innistrad Block Constructed. I'm talking, of course, about Intangible Virtue and Lingering Souls. These two cards are quite powerful. If you're in a token deck, going wide and pumping your whole team is exactly what you want to be doing, and these two cards are some of the best in the game, not just in Innistrad block, but in the whole game, for token decks. Intangible Virtue pumps your whole board, and Lingering Souls gives you four 1-1 flying bodies with only a single card. This is an interesting ban because this is one that was done preemptively, before any block-constructed tournaments could be played. However, Wizards knew that these two cards were too good for the format because Intangible Virtue decks were finding considerable success in Standard, and Lingering Souls was clearly the best card for making tokens in the entire format. And the problem with token strategies wasn't even just these two cards. There were lots of other payoffs for going wide in Block 2, like Gavany Township or Hellrider. Basically, there were just way too many incentives for building token decks across all the colors, and the format was not very well equipped to deal with that. Had Wizards failed to ban these cards, the entire format would have been about going wide and the various bonuses for doing so, which would not have made for a very interesting format. Neither of these cards ever ended up being banned anywhere else, so they were able to find success elsewhere. Lingering Souls has, of course, gone on to become one of the best token-producing cards in the entire game, and has been played in multiple formats as a result. So, Wizards did a pretty good job in 2012, only having to ban a couple of cards in Block Constructed, and they definitely needed to do it. As a result, there weren't too many degenerate things going on in Magic in 2012. Now, let's move to 2013. 2013 was not quite as successful of a year in terms of avoiding ban announcements, but it wasn't too much worse. Three cards had to be banned. The first banning announcement to make some changes came in March of 2013, and it banned two cards in Modern, Bloodbraid Elf and Seething Song. Let's start with Bloodbraid Elf. The Elf is obviously quite powerful, in large part as a result of the Cascade mechanic. Between the reasonable, hasty body the Elf gives you, and Cascade, you will always get more than your mana's worth out of Bloodbraid Elf. The rationale behind banning the card was to weaken Jund decks. They were too consistent and powerful in the early days of Modern, and Jund was easily the best deck in the format, and Bloodbraid Elf was seen as the heart of the problem. Bloodbraid Elf basically always gives you a two-for-one, cascading into stuff like Lightning Bolt and Liliana of the Veil, and that's some pretty insane value. This banning was effective, and knocked Jund decks down a peg in the format. Bloodbraid Elf did not remain banned in Modern forever, though. It got unbanned in February of 2018, and it remains unbanned in the format now. While it still sees a lot of play, the format has changed enough since 2013 that it hasn't made any deck into a dominant powerhouse or anything like that. Seething Song was the other card to get banned in the January 2013 announcement. While Storm decks might not have been quite as dominant as Jund, they were still really good, and one of the key things that Wizards tries to do in Modern is make it so that no decks can win the game consistently on turn 3 or earlier. Storm decks were doing this. Like most Storm decks, those from Modern of 2012 sought to play a bunch of mana ritual effects like Seething Song, as well as a bunch of cantrips, to quickly rip through the entire library, eventually casting Past and Flames to do it all over again, before finally casting a card with Storm that would win you the game, which in this case was usually Grape Shot. Wizards had to choose one of these ritual effects to try to nerf Storm decks, and in the end they chose to ban Seething Song. That's because you could cast Seething Song and pay Past and Flames flashback cost, and then you get to cast Seething Song again, and you can just keep doing that with all your ritual effects and cantrips. 
So it was really sort of the glue that held the Storm deck together. Before Seething Song got banned, it really wasn't unusual for these decks to go off with this on turn 3 with a Seething Song getting things started. Like the banning of Bloodbraid Elf, this seems to have been another good decision on Wizards' part, as it really kept Storm decks from becoming quite as powerful as they were in Eternal formats. Seething Song is still banned in Modern today. The next time a card would be banned in 2013 was in May, when Second Sunrise was banned in Modern. This is an interesting banning, because it didn't really happen for power level reasons. Sure, Second Sunrise was part of a Tier 1 combo deck, often called Sunny Side Up or Eggs, that sought to play a bunch of artifacts that make mana and cantrip, like Chromatic Star, rip through the entire deck, and use Conjurer's Bobble to restock your deck with the cards you want. In the meantime, the deck uses Face Reward and Second Sunrise to keep doing this over and over again, with the ultimate game plan being to kill someone really slowly by sacrificing a single Pyrite spell bomb a bunch of times. In the end, Second Sunrise got banned because the deck took so darn long to win, often involving 15 minute turns. It really messed things up in timed rounds at premier events. Normally, if time expires at a Grand Prix or a Pro Tour, players are given five additional turns to complete the game. Most of the time, these turns are completed pretty quickly, but Eggs players could make these five short turns last for an eternity. So in the end, Second Sunrise got banned to make it so people couldn't play this effective but extremely slow deck at the premier level, as it could make big events last an hour longer or more, and that really isn't fun for anybody, except maybe the Eggs player. Second Sunrise remains banned in Modern, and I don't think we should expect that to change anytime soon. Now, let's move to the next card to be banned in this time frame, which takes us to 2014, the year that Deathrite Shaman got banned in Modern. Deathrite Shaman is a very powerful card, and is definitely in the conversation when you're talking about the best one-drops ever printed. The Shaman's power comes from the fact that it is great at all stages of the game. If you get it early, you can use it to help you ramp, and if you get it late, you can use it to start going after graveyards, while also gaining life or making your opponent lose life. When Deathrite Shaman gets to do both of those things, it's pretty crazy. Most of the time, when you see a mana dork like Lana War Elves, it's really only useful in the early game, and the price you pay for that strong mana acceleration is that the card becomes increasingly useless as the game goes on, but Deathrite Shaman isn't balanced that way. It matters all game long and plays a significant role in helping players win games, and it does all of this despite only costing a single mana. Deathrite Shaman ended up doing the same thing for Jun decks that Bloodbraid Elf had done a few years earlier. It made them too good. Jun decks were all about attrition and trading one for one, and Deathrite Shaman makes all those trades far more valuable for you than anyone else because you can use your graveyard as such a valuable resource. The banning of Deathrite Shaman once again brought Jun decks back to Earth in Modern. Deathrite Shaman also proved to be too good for Legacy as well, where it became a staple in just about any deck that could cast it, and as a result, it was also banned from that format in July of 2018. Well, those are the cards that were banned in 2012, 2013, and 2014. For the remainder of this series, we won't ever have more than one year covered in a single video, since from 2015 on, Wizards printed a lot of silly powerful cards, and next time we'll be talking about the ones that got the ban in 2015. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you catch future editions of this series, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to catch up on the older episodes, you should see the playlist on your screen now. Thanks for watching.